Now let's continue from the previous demo. In this demo, we're going to actually style the game board. So let's take a look what's in game board. So when I select the game board, we notice there is an element called game grid underneath that. So game grid is a container to contain all the image cards. Now, what is each of the image card? Each of the image card here is represented by a class called a game item. Now you may ask, you said, what, what does the symbol mean, right? So this means this particular game item or image card element is actually generated dynamically during runtime. So it is generated by JavaScript. You would not be able to see it in a mockup. Now, usually it's a challenge if you want to style the dynamic content from JavaScript. So with brand, um, you will be able to actually style those dynamic content, even though they're not in mockup, but you could do it in the brand pretty easily. Let me show you what we're going to do next. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, pick the game item. I'm going to actually apply the background color onto this image card, which is represented by the game item. So let me select any of that. And then I'm going to actually create the style rules from the element class. In this case, it's called game item. So once we do that, you see there is a game item element has been uh, defined here. I'm going to actually go to the background. And I could also uh, directly uh, type in uh, some hex number. Okay, so now the background color of the image card is set with this particular combination. Pretty good. Next, what we could do is we're going to actually style the container, which is at the game grid level. Since game grid is a container to contain all the image cards, so we want to actually make sure this image cards is contained in a nice layout. So this particular layout is called CSS Flexbox. So the Flexbox will allow allow you to arrange content into a box either vertically or horizontally. Depends what kind of parameters you want to enter. So let's actually apply the Flexbox into this game grid. So again, we'll actually create a style rule for the game grid. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to, to change some of the parameters here. First, we're going to change, we're going to actually uh, change the size. First, we're going to actually apply some siding parameters into game grid. So we're going to make the width 100%. The height is also 100%. And then we're going to actually um, go to the display, go to the layout, play with the display to select the layout called Fraxbox. All right. So once we've done that, next what we're going to do is we're actually going to config the Fraxbox layout. So we're going to choose the Frax wrap to be the option of wrap. We're going to try the frax pack to be justified. So there's a little flexibility you could play with that. And then we're going to actually uh, play with a frax line pack to make it also justified. All right. Now you can see all the images, the cards, are kind of laid out in a horizontal fashion from left to right. Obviously, they're not in good shape yet. So we need to do more work onto it. Okay, so um, but one thing we want to do first is we want to go to the game item, um, which we could actually select from the style rules. And then we're going to actually uh, apply a little more sizing into it. 
So we're going to make go to size. We're going to make the width to be 24%. And height to be 23.5%. Obviously, these are the magic number. We did a play with that for a few times to get those right. All right, so it looks like the image cards are laid out in much better size inside this layout. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what are the images available and we're gonna replace all the real image uh, with those uh, particular URI. So let's go back to this live DOM and then um, Let's look into the car template. What's in car template? If you look at the markup, it's basically defining a template for each individual uh, image car. So it does have a little default value for the paragraph, which is meaning there's nothing there yet. So first step we're going to do is we're going to actually delete um, this particular paragraph. And then instead, we're going to actually go to our assets and we're going to actually look for what are the image available. So double click on that. We're basically adding the image assets into this template. All right. Now, so now um, you could see all the URI disappeared, but then we still don't see the images yet, right? So we're going to actually go to the refresh button to refresh the design time. So make sure all the image will show up. All right. So we have some image now, right? So next, what we're going to do is we're looking at those images, you know. They're not bad, but they're not really uh, in, in, in good position, in good size yet, right? So let's do something onto it. OK. So next, what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to uh, work on each individual uh, um, image card. But then we notice that uh, we already define a class called image item. So instead of using the image item, we actually want to create a class so that we could apply all the uh, style into those image cards, but without really interference with the game item by itself. So hence, we're going to actually uh, try to create another cross. And let's go to this cross. And this cross, we just create this uh, game item. So, so we actually want to define a new game item class called data game item image. So when we create that, looks like we just try to define a new style onto this game item image. Okay, very well. So what we want to do is again, we want to actually uh, apply the right sizing into it. The two things we want to do is apply, make sure the max width is 100% and make sure the max height is also 100%. Okay, so now it looks like um, the images is positioned nicely and with a, a, a right size. But obviously, they're not really aligned that correctly yet. So we need to actually go back uh, to the image item. So let's actually choose the image item. And then we're going to actually apply uh, some style onto it. We're going to actually do the flex box again. And then we're going to actually apply some parameters in the flex box. So the one we want to do is first, we want to make sure uh, the pack, flex pack is in the center, as well as the flex align is also in the center. Now we could see the memory image cost is in much better shape, right? All the images is positioned well, aligned well. Okay, 
That's great. So we've basically uh, worked through uh, all the layout for uh, the image cards inside of this, what we call uh, the game board or grid layout. So the other thing we want to work on is the game size. So for now, we're actually uh, already um, a product style for the default setting, which is four by four, right? So next I want to do six by six and eight by eight. So how are we going to do that? Those are basically uh, from the command line. Those are actually need to generate dynamically. With brand, there's a very interesting feature called turn on interactive mode. So this is an interactive mode, which you're going to see it in the runtime. And then brand can mimic the result of this interactive mode. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of choose the default setting for the game size, we're going to choose 6x6 game size. And then once we set the game size, we're going to actually go back to the design area to apply further um, style onto it. Now, how are we going to make sure this game size is set up to the right setting with the right appropriate classes? This setting is already set to the 6x6 game size. Right? We want to make sure we could work on the right class. So let's actually uh, select the game grid again, which is container, and go to HTML attributes to double check. So added the attributes, we could see that the ID is game grid, and the particular class is called medium game. So this is the one we want to work with. OK, very good. So now um, we could actually go back, and then um, we could actually go to the style rules. So now we're going to actually still make sure we select game grid and go to the style rules. We're going to actually add a new style rule. And then this is one actually associated with the default CSS. So we're going to add it into this level. So once we add that, we see there is a new style. So double click on that, we can rename it. So how are we going to call it? We're going to call it medium game space dot game item. So as you can see, we could use the auto selection or auto complete box to complete this name. Now we create a medium game game item. So we could actually work furthermore onto the CSS properties. So what we're going to set here is we want to make sure um, the size is correct. So the size here uh, for the width is we're going to set up to 16.25% and the height to be 16%. Okay. So now um, we could actually see that the 6x6 game size is laid out pretty nicely. You can count it 6x6. Six six. All right. So we're going to repeat the same thing that we just did uh, for the 6x6 six six for 8x8. Eight eight. So I'm going to actually speed up a little bit. So first, we're going to actually go back to the interactive mode and then choose 8x8. Eight eight. Go back to the design. And then go back to the grid, game grid, and make sure it is actually um, point to the uh, right cross. In this case, it's called large gate. So again, we're going to go to the style rules, and we're going to go to the style rule, and then add the um, default data CSS level. We're going to actually add, we're going to add a new cross. Let's double click on that. It's called large. With auto complete, very easy to do. And the second one is called game item. Very nice. So now we have a new uh, large game game item here. Go back to CSS properties. Let's work on the sizing again. This time I'm going to actually pick, make the width to be 12% and height to be 11.75%. Okay, 
So now we could see 8 by 8. Everything is laid out very nicely. Okay, very good. So we have just uh, applied a style to the game size and make everything look perfectly. So, you know, to be able to make it look more professional, the next what we try to do is we could put some logo onto it, right? So how do we do that? So let's actually go back to the game body level because this is the level which contains the whole layout, whole elements into it. Um, we're going to go back to the assets and we're going to actually take a look if there is a uh, logo a variable. So here we actually already have a logo 120 by 120. This is size PNG. Double click on that. We'll actually just create a new image um, element under uh, the game body. So I'm going to actually name this one called a logo. And now you could see the logo is actually created by default in the 1 1 kind of position in the grid. But it doesn't look nice yet, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create uh, some style onto it. So with this new logo, what we want to do is we're going to actually uh, create some, make sure it's in the right position. So we're going to go to the style, make sure the position here is absolute. So this is the right absolute position we want to do. And for the top level, we want to make it 14 pixel and then the left uh, the left here is 32 pixel okay so now um, we have done quite a few things here we have actually style the game board we have uh, actually style each of the image card into the right position right size we use Braxbox as uh, a style to make all the content fit into the box horizontally and vertically very nicely. We also are uh, using the interactive mode to actually uh, set up the different size and fix all the image size onto it. And then finally, we make it a very professional, add a logo into right position. So again, this looks good. Let's save everything. And we actually just complete um, old style for the game board for this demo.